live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering DevNet Create 2017. Brought to you by Cisco. Welcome back everyone. We're live in, here in San Francisco, theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Cisco's inaugural event, DevNet Create. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. My co-host, Peter Burris, general manager of Wikibon.com Research. Next guest is Damian Edwards, co-founder of RunDeck. Uh, He's been on the crowd chats with Does Event um, DevOps in the Enterprise, uh, the content chair, uh, co-founder of Rundeck. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Great to meet you in person. We've been Good online to be here. chatting away. Um, quick thought from you: of Cisco getting into DevOps, um, the conversation is pretty straightforward. We think it's awesome uh, that they're doing this. Yeah. Good direction. Right in line with DevOps. Things looking good. Middle of the mm -hmm. fairway. What do they? What do they do next? Yeah, I mean, how does Cisco it, take the ball from here and take it to, take it home? Well, you know, I think it's just more of the same, right? I think that you can't underestimate the sort of the split that's happened in the sort of DevOps have and have nots. That sounds kind of kind of odd, but you know, a lot of we talk about are the unicorns, the high flying sort of special built organizations that really grew up with this in the last five to ten years. And I think where Cisco really plays is in the other 99% of commerce of the world, which is you know, the core kind of classic enterprises. And DevOps really hasn't made that deep of a debt yet into that, that's what we call dark IT, right? The, the, the rest of the world that people have to deal with 30 years of, in some places, you know, different technologies, skills, um, you know, acquisitions, mismatches, all the legacy, um, you know, all the bureaucracy of large organizations. And Cisco has a, a path into that and a, a voice of authority into that. So happy to see they're putting such emphasis on these you know, DevOps and Agile ideas mm -hmm. and help you know, to drive them in, into that. And they got the app dynamics um, thing going down too, the big acquisition. Their yeah. slogan is where apps meet infrastructure. You know, we always just talk about infrastructure as code. They're talking about programmable networking, which is the same thing. We want more programmable. Right. Um, so how do they make that transition uh, to this new operational model? I mean, networks used to be very fragile, set yeah. in stone. Um, someone used to joke, hey, they're, they're called no ops because they would say no to everything from a developer standpoint. Sure. How do they transition from no ops to a new operational model that's agile and adding value? Well, um, you know, it, it, the the the, the the bigger, I think, issue here is that ops is getting squeezed, right? So it's, it's an existential crisis for them. That the reason why they're always the no, you know, the, the no folks is because they're always spending their time protecting that capacity because they're overrun by, they're always outnumbered, first of all. Then they're being overrun with just all, you know, all these tickets of new stuff coming in, plus incidents happening in the middle. Uh, the capacity has always been an issue. Now with this new, um, you know, kind of DevOps and uh, re really digital transformation inspired pressure, it's go, go, go faster, open things up. At the same time, the same business folks are saying from the other direction, lock things down, don't be the next hack, don't be the next, the next breach, don't be the next major outage, right? Uh, you know, and it's so, really a lot of pressure, it's a right, pressure so cooker. So they're squeezed. So the big answer to this crisis, how do we relieve that, how do we relieve that pressure? And the key technique is to be able to actually allow other people to participate in what traditionally was only operations tasks. And if you want me, to, if you allow me to go, kind of one one step. So democratization of operations in it, a way. It is, and what they're doing is they're they see the organizations that really kind of nailed this. They're dividing up um, the idea of an operations procedure. It used to be everything was in operations. You defined it, you, you ran it, and you had all security and management audit control over it. In these new ways, what they're doing is they're breaking it up into kind of three pieces to say, the ability to define these automated procedures, the ability to execute them, and the ability to have that management control and oversight. Let's to make those in three discrete parts, and let's move that to where the labor capacity makes the most sense. And by doing that, operations can kind of free up those bottlenecks, start to decouple more, allow the rest of the organization to move a lot quicker, and not be in that horrible position of being squeezed to death and having to tell everybody no. There, but there's a number of reasons Great why it's happening. Sorry, um, the and, and one of the key ones is that, uh, and it brings it back to the Cisco conversation, I want to ask you about this, is that it used to be that uh, operations was tied to a particular asset, the server, more mm -hmm. often than not. And so a single individual could pull all those things together because a single individual had, or single group, had control over right. virtually all the resources that were part of that. Now we're talking about applications that are inherently distributed. Mm -hmm. And so we can't look at the process of operations in the same way. So this comes back to Cisco. Does the world need to think more discreetly 
about these new highly distributed, deeply distributed applications differently and is that going to catalyze uh, and uh, the diffusion of more of these high quality DevOps principles? What do you think? Yeah, it, it has to. I mean, if you look at the business driver, which is this, you know, this digital transformation, right? It's, a lot of people kind of scoff at because it's like, wait, this is 1999, I, you know, you need a website, what are we talking about, right? But you realize what it is is saying all these disparate systems you used to have, right? I, you know, I, I could get my cable bill, but it's just a, online, it's just a PDF of what they send to the printers, right? But now I want everything I could do when I call up a, a the, the, the customer service agent, I want to do it through my phone, or I want to do it you know, on, on, my, on my laptop. And that means all of those formerly you know, distinct systems that lived in different windows on a customer service agent's uh, you know, desktop, and if the little thing to check the router status blew up, well, I just talk, talk past it, right? But now it's really going to matter in this digital world. So, this, so they're dri the business is driving that integration to where things don't live in isolation anymore. And because of that, um, you know, that the, the complexity and this distributed nature of these, uh, of these services is rising, yeah. and when that happens, uh, you know, that makes op operations inherent inherently more difficult and just contributes to that squeeze even more and you got to find a way to relieve that. Great point and uh, great analysis. That just picked off what we were talking about on our intro package of the redefinition of, of what a full stack developer is. Yeah. Now, full stack implies you're talking about a distributed application model where there's no isolation anymore, so you could almost argue that that's going to be obsolete. It's a horizontal, a full horizontal developer. Well, a horizontal stack, stack developer, full stack, so. but how they connect will be different. Well, it just kind of brings up the notion of, okay, things were in isolation, right. built to the database, now I go down the network, yep. so now a whole new developer category potentially is emerging. Do you feel the same yeah. way? I mean, well, we're it, speculating, it, we don't actually know. Sure, but, uh, I mean, if you are like a Netflix who prides itself on its ability to go out, pay top of market, which means they are the top of market, and you know, attract uh, the best talent, the only one can win that game, right? So for everybody else in the world, this idea of we're going to have these polygot, you know, superhuman, uh, I know everything engineers, it, it, it's never, never going to happen, right? So we have to find a way to use our systems and our processes to allow that kind of integration to happen and allow those people to define the control procedures and policies for the things that they know about, and then allow that all to integrate to where then we can have other folks operate it and run it. Again, it's that idea of moving those parts around yep. to where we can best take advantage of the labor. Otherwise, you're, just, it's just, you're never going to find it. I mean, you go to any conference, NASA developer, uh, DevOps conference, and ask people, you know, how many LinkedIn spam you know, messages do you get a day because the word DevOps is in your profile, and everybody yep. just laughs because it's dozens, right? What? So you're never going to have that idea, so you have to build the systems to recreate that full stack capability. And have people have access to be one, rather than that superhuman, it becomes democratized at that level. Yeah. So, it's interesting. So, one of the things that you guys did at the, uh, the DevOps Enterprise Summit, I know you were on the content chair, but sure. I made a note here for my, make sure I get this question to you, was, uh, I, like, I like this thing you guys touched upon. Is DevOps best left to grow organically, or is there a growing need slash desire for an agile manifesto? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the top down, and do the manifesto, or organic thoughts? Yeah, I'd say no, because I mean, what DevOps is, is a series of kind of problem statements. It's an umbrella over a bunch of problem statements and a bunch of you know, solutions that keeps evolving. With, this is why this, you know, the, the DOES conferences are so interesting, because it's practitioners talking about what's worked for them. And I feel like uh, you know, at the highest level, you know, if you really need to have a definition, you know, go ahead and read the Phoenix Project or the DevOps Handbook. It's done a great job of, 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 of collating all that. Um, but at the end of the day, if you, it's not one thing. It's not a single practice, right? It's not a single thing. There's no single thing you can do to say, I'm going to transform a major you know, global financial services uh, company into a fast, nimble operation. There is no one thing. It's a series of things you have to try over and over again. So you know, look at DevOps as a movement and where you can learn from practitioners, apply it to your own organization, see what happens, yeah. report back, try some new stuff, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of like basically have a manifesto, but it's really just more of marching orders. It organically has to form on its own. Yeah, That's I think basically there, what you're saying. I think there already is. I mean, I mean, you, you can say, hey, hand yeah. wave a manifesto, but it's not like, this is the playbook. I mean, you can get there the is handbook no playbook. to learn. Yeah. Technique. Okay, cool. Well, appreciate the insight. Uh, let's talk about your business. What do you guys do? Sure. Uh, what are some of the things that uh, Rundex doing that you're the co-founder of? Share a little bit about the company. Yeah, Rundeck is um, you know, at the kind of, what is it, right? It's an orchestration and scheduling platform. Um, it's used by operations organizations, generally uh, from um, you know, high, large startups, but also uh, large you know, kind of DevOps unicorns, but also a lot of large enterprises. And what they're using it for is uh, for defining 
um, and improving their operations procedures, right? What happens after deployment? Where do we define all of the procedures to manage all these disparate systems? All those islands of automation, right? We used to, you know, Chef and Puppet was the hottest thing around three years ago, and now it's like, oh, now it's Docker and Kubernetes and everything else, and now we still have our old PowerShell stuff, our Blade Logic stuff over there, right? Some Opsware stuff over there. So what are we going to, you know, what are we going to do? We need a way to define the procedures that span all of those and allow people to participate in that, in that operations world so they can relieve that, that crunch. So we see it a lot for um, automating the, uh, creating standard operating procedures, kind of like you know, classic runbook automation mm -hmm. um, with the next generation twist, we'll say. Uh, but we also see a lot of self-service operations, meaning that let's let other people participate. Let's let developers define these procedures as run deck jobs, and then let operations vet That's them. That's where you talk about the operational around. being relieved a bit. Yeah, you have to. You can't just say there's one little group here that's going to uh, you know, deploy and run all of these things in this world, we have to let other people participate in that, not just for deployment, which is big in the DevOps world, yeah. but for what happens after deployment that nobody wants to talk about, yeah. all the escalations, all the interruptions, all the, you know, the, the, those problems, uh, you know, Rundeck really plays in that area, helping people to get that under, under control. David, thanks so much for sharing your insight. Congratulations on your startup, and great to meet you in person. Yeah. We've had great chats on our crowd chat. You guys have been awesome with uh, uh, Gene Kim and the community that you're involved with, with De um, DevOps for the Enterprise Summit. Practitioners sharing. That's a great ethos. Yeah, it's a pretty and it really awesome aligns event, yeah. with uh, what, what's going on in the industry, so congratulations. More CUBE coverage here, exclusive of Cisco's inaugural event called DevNet Create, an extension of their DevNet core classic uh, network and developer systems at Cisco. This is an open source one, this is out in the community. It's not all Cisco, all part of the, part of the community. And of course, we're bringing it to you with live coverage. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. Stay with us. Hi, I'm April Mitchell, and I'm the Senior Director 